Hi. Good afternoon. It's Dean from Math Star Observatory. A little bit of a special update today, and this has arisen from uh, someone making an inquiry. Well, actually, it's one of our superstars um, in in Canada, Kendall, who's got one of our magnetometers up there. Asked the question whether I was aware on the twenty third of uh, June this year about the uh, magnetic anomaly, uh, which suddenly uh, vibrated uh, the magnetosphere and caused unexpected, unexpected electrical surges through the ground. And, you know, as you would expect, ground currents was also measured and it was noted in those ground currents that there was fluctuations in the magnetic field. Uh, so um, the good thing about this is that, you know, going through it, uh, we managed to find uh, the time at when they occurred. So we got the time and the date, and therefore it was easy for me to go into the archive uh, with regards to the magnetosphere sensor that we've got here in the UK and to check to see at that time on that day whether we'd picked up the same occurrence. Now, one thing you'll note is that this is measuring in uh, nanoteslas. We measure in microteslas. Uh, this um, is uh, universal time so we identified the time and I'll show you what we got now I'll highlight the region uh, a little bit better than what I have done but I just wanted to show you uh, where the anomaly started at what time as you can see there are all uh, the data sets that call anomaly and I'll now show you on the chart that you're looking at there where that anomaly takes place but I'm going to have to do it in uh, something like paint so I can you know draw a circle around it and you'll see exactly where the anomaly is so we don't normally look for these things uh, this was just you know uh, a recognized signal that they picked up uh, they're not sure what caused it um, they associate it to uh, S waves in the P region and you know generally uh, during low solar activity like we're in right now you get to uh, pick up on these signals um, and these uh, tremors in our magnetosphere but in general what we're looking for here at the magnet at, at the observatory is you know large declines or large increases in the magnetosphere strength and not so much um, you know these um, patterns within the signal but we are capable of um, you know zooming in with that resolution um, one thing I will do hopefully and I'll include it in this uh, it's, a, it's a pity that you know our magnetosphere sensor only um, works on a resolution of every 15 minutes nevertheless it's still picked up on this anomaly uh, the other thing is we don't use nanoteslas we use microteslas which are you know uh, a lot bigger chunks of um, field strength as opposed to you know really delicate um, pieces but nevertheless we picked it up but we do have um, another piece of equipment here at the observatory which monitors every three seconds so I'm going to have to uh, pull the archive data upon the TriMag to the 23rd of June and uh, I might also include that uh, in this video but it will be interesting just now and then to you know inspect a chunk of the data that we collect on uh, not just here in the UK but in other parts of the uh, world where we've got our magnetometers and just see if this signal is um, more reoccurring see if it's happening a lot more often um, but anyway let's identify where um, you know these scientists spotted the signal on this chart for you I mean it's 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 right at the very bottom and you can see probably by um, you know the the uh, field strength that it pops from uh, one uh, 1919.15 to 119.5 and fluctuates perfectly in that range for a short period of time it's here but I know but one at a time I've uh, uploaded this to YouTube sometimes the uh, audio is out of sync with the video so I'll just show you where that signal is then uh, on this chart and I also believe that there was another point as well which I'll get to so let's go into paint and uh, you know we can show you where the uh, all, all the activity was taking place so as you can see the red arrow indicates the anomaly that the scientists um, picked up on 
The blue arrow, I, I believe, is um, the second time the anomaly occurs, about an hour and or two hours later, um, but doesn't go on as quite as long as the first one. But you know, very similar pattern there. Um, I'm going to check the trimag in the archives to see how this looks uh, because you know we're looking at it every 15 minute intervals every time it goes up or down it's at a 15 minute in interval um, and you know just over the course of an hour at I believe uh, s between 6 18 a.m. to 7 12 AM that that first anomaly occurred within that time period and then again a few hours later as you can see so um, you know if there is anything on the TriMag data going back to the 23rd when this anomaly happened you know I'll, I'll show it in this video so bear with me well guys I've just checked the TriMag data and as you know our resolution is of every three seconds uh, Preston Lancashire Observatory when monitoring that uh, anomaly that took place on the 23rd of June managed to capture a very very small piece of actually what was going on at that point in time. I'm going to show you what our TriMag system uh, caught during that hour. Um, but I'll just say, uh, you know, our equipment really comes into its own uh, at the resolution that we record and you're going to miss a lot of the information or a lot of the data or a lot of the anomaly if you're not recording at that resolution. Now I just want to show you what Preston Lancashire missed. So as you can see we did a lot better than Preston uh, Lancashire's observatory in that we collected nearly 1,700 separate data bits on the anomaly uh, not full like they did. Um, what I've had to do here is split uh, it into two charts because if you put the two uh, lots of data together what you end up with is almost the block so by doing this we can split it down and see what took place but as you can see the frequency of the anomaly was a lot higher than what Preston had recorded and um, relayed to the public as you can see there's a lot more events occurring within that hour and um, again yeah, you know that's where our observatory really comes into its own you know with the equipment that we've got uh, people you know need to realize you know it, it took a long time uh, to build that equipment and you know it really stands out from everybody else's when we're getting much more data you know thousands time more data than what other people are on magnetic anomalies and you know we caught exactly what Preston did only in a higher resolution on the 23rd of June 2020 at 6 a.m. in the morning so there it is what I would like to do uh, I'd like to run it through like if I had uh, I probably have got it but I don't know where it is you know something where you could put that into a wave format and listen to it it'd be interesting I think to see what it sounds like I'm pretty sure uh, someone out there, one of our subscribers, has got that sort of equipment where you can transfer data like this into a waveform and then just run a wave player over it so you get to listen, uh, not only see a visual of the data, uh, but it is unique, uh, that event that took place. It really is. And, you know, this has come from the TriMag system that we've got. And, uh, you know, what we're looking at is on the magnetosphere sensor we're looking at the strength but you know when we're looking at this we are seeing something else what was taking place with the magnetic north pole during that anomaly was a vibration a very fast vibration and it was moving about quite rapidly at that point in time uh, um, that you know Preston um, recorded this anomaly but you know, we not only recorded it on the TriMag, we also recorded it on the magnetosphere sensor and the data what you're looking at is what we got from that event and you know, at a higher resolution. So it is amazing uh, you know, what our observatory can do. And it wasn't just you know, a few other observatories around the world that caught this anomaly, we caught it. It's not something that stands out to us uh, normally. The only reason I went back into the archives 
was to just see what was going on out of curiosity. But what we're looking for with the TriMag system is actual movements of the magnetic north pole. And yes, it is a component of the magnetosphere, you know, um, as is the magneto within the core of the Earth. All these are the same thing. But what we're looking at is the movements of the magnetic north pole as well as the magnetosphere strength to give us an idea of what is changing in the core of our planet during this magnetic reversal. So just to finish uh, this upload, a quick look at um, Tuscan Arizona data that came in yesterday uh, from one of our superstars, Scott. Uh, thank you for uh, sending this over to us and being one of our superstars. And as you can see, not much has happened. Um, you know, it, it started uh, around 50, went up slightly and then slowly towards the end of the month um, it started to go back down probably will be down there at 50 again uh, during this month and we'll have a look uh, but the nice thing is guys uh, you know we've got the data coming in from different locations now all around the world and if something does happen uh, noticeably you know you'll be informed of that taking place before anyone else um, the anomaly that we've been discussing that took place on the 23rd of June at 6 o'clock in the morning isn't something really that you know we're interested in at the observatory uh, following and could you imagine how painful it would be to go through all the data that we collect uh, not just on the magnetosphere data but also on the TriMag I mean that thing alone brings in nearly half a million uh, separate data points every month so you know you can imagine to go through all that is quite a lot if we know that there was an event that took place like the one we've been looking at in this video and at what time it took place we can always go back into the archives very quickly and dig out the information on what we managed to capture and as you can see we caught thousands more points of data uh, on that anomaly than I've, I've seen to date from any uh, observatory that picked up on that event. Um, so, you know, it just shows you the uh, level of resolution and the quality of our equipment is here at the observatory. It's not, um, you know, junk, let's just put it that way. Compared to everybody else's, it's a very sophisticated piece of equipment. And, you know, if you've been following this channel, it took a long time to build and program and to get it to work the way we're getting it to work right now. So we are covering this just as good, if not better sometimes, than some of these big organisations out there. And, you know, for that reason, guys, it should be really supported a lot more than what it is, this observatory. It is a shame, a real shame that, you know, we don't have more people come forward and support it financially. Um, but... You know, I'm grateful uh, for the support that we've got that's got us to where we are, but we're nowhere near finished. And as we get closer and closer to this event, you know, we are going to be wishing we always had more than what we've got now. And the only reason we, the only way we can do that is by increasing the amount of revenue that we raise for this observatory. It's as simple as that. So I'll mention it once, guys. Links down there. You can become one of our patrons or you can make a one off. PayPal donation it's entirely up to you and it's not mandatory but I say this all the time if none of the public support it then it's not a publicly supported um, observatory is it so you know uh, the only way to keep us moving forward is to keep us funded it's as simple as that guys you have a, an amazing day I hope you've enjoyed today um, and the information that we managed to get just shows how good our observatory and the equipment is, doesn't it? So with that, uh, I'll say what I usually do. You take care, as always. Bye for now.